My name is John Callahan. I'm a retired FAA employee. I was the division manager for the Accidents Evaluation and Investigation Division in D.C. About two years before I retired, I received a call from Alaska region where the uh, region wanted to know what to tell the media. When I questioned, tell the media what, he says about the UFO, and it went downhill from there. What UFO? It turned out I told him what any government employee would do at that time was to tell him it's under investigation. And then I had him send all that data to the FAA's tech center in Atlantic City. The next day, my uh, immediate boss, service director, Harvey Safir, and I went to Atlantic City. I had just purchased a, uh, a new video camera, and I videoed the, uh, the event. In Atlantic City, we had them play back on a, uh, on a scope, you would call it a scope, a planned view display, PVD, exactly what the pilot uh, uh, seen or what the controller seen, and we uh, tied that in with the voice uh, tape so we could hear exactly what the controller said and what he heard, and we taped it. We came back the next day, uh, briefed the administrator, Admiral Ingen, on what happened. He wanted a five-minute briefing. After we started the brief and he wanted to know if he could see the video, we put the video on, he watched the video, the whole video. The next day uh, he set up a, uh, a meeting for me to give a dog and pony show to President Reagan's scientific staff and whoever they brought over and to hand off all that data to them. That uh, morning in the FAA round room, it was either 9 or 10 o'clock, uh, three men from uh, Reagan's scientific staff three CIA people, three FBI people, and I don't remember who the other guys were, along with all the FAA experts that I brought with me that could decide or talk about the hardware and the software, how it worked, we put on a dog and pony show. We let them watch the video, we had all the data there, we had all the printouts that the computer uh, put out, they got all excited over it. When it was all done, the uh, CIA, uh, one of the CIA men told the people they were now sworn to secrecy, that this meeting never happened, and this event never happened. When I asked them why, uh, uh, you know, I thought it was probably just a stealth bomber at the time, he says, well, this is the first time that we have uh, recorded radar data on a UFO, and these guys are gonna get all excited uh, drooling over all this data. I said, well, you're gonna tell the public about it. And he says, no, we don't tell the public about this. It would uh, panic the public. He says, we're gonna go back and study this. I said, okay, that uh, was what he was going to do. Now, I've told this story many times, and I get sometimes funny looks from people. I have with me the uh, voice tapes of the uh, controllers that were involved, the FAA original tapes. See, after we handed this stuff off to the president's staff, the FAA didn't know what to do with it. We don't separate UFOs from real traffic, so it's not our problem, okay? <laughs> I have a copy of the original of the uh, video that we took, which is rather interesting. And once, once the thing was all over, the report started coming into my office, but because it wasn't an FAA air traffic problem, the FAA's report ended up on a table in my office. And it stayed there until I retired when one of the staffers packed up all my gear and helped it move to my house. Also, in a box I found just a few good days ago, in my 1992 tax return, I have the target printouts from the uh, computer data, which so if you wanted to or, or, or look at every target that was up there at the time, you can now reproduce this from this piece of paper here. And it's called the UFO Incident, uh, Japan 1648, I believe the number was, that happened on November the 18th, 1986. Uh, I'm prepared to go to Congress, to swear before Congress that everything I've told you people and everything that is here is the truth. Thank you. Good morning. I hope you'll pardon me. I'm a little bit nervous. My name is Charles L. Brown. I'm a Lieutenant Colonel U.S. Air Force, retired, subsequently seven years with the Foreign Service. I like the name Charlie Brown, a gentleman by the name of Charles Schultz, of great talent. Sort of uh, elevated the name, if you will. Uh, during World War II, I was a 
young farm boy from West Virginia. I got the patriotic bug, joined the United States Army, ended up flying bombers in Europe, and ended the war transport in the Pacific. Finished college in the summer, late summer of 49, recalled to active duty in the newly formed United States Air Force. I was assigned to an organization called Office of Special Investigations. The Air Force, as most of you know, was formed in 1947. OSI as a central investigative agency for the Air Force was formed, I think, in 1948. So everything was relatively new. Needless to say, starting in 47, UFOs were rather new. The Air Force Intelligence, their Air Technical Intelligence Center was at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and I had my office in a building adjacent to it. And our organization was the worldwide investigative agency for the Air Force for any unidentified flying objects. This lasted for about two years. The project name was known as Project Grudge, it was the predecessor to a project known as Blue Book, which Ed Rupelt headed. During my experience with it, I would collect the data from, I didn't collect it, it was sent into my office. I analyzed it. As a pilot investigator, I was able to offer some bits of advice to the air technical intelligence people. Now, you might visualize a massive office, but as I recall, we had a first lieutenant, uh, a secretary, and a technical sergeant. That was the essence of Project Blue Book when it started, or Project Grudge Blue Book, and it expanded somewhat. During the review as an analyst of these various documentary reports, if you will, or documents, I became clearly convinced that there was substance to what was being reported, in that we had ground visual, ground radar, airborne visual, and airborne radar confirmation of some of these sightings. The individuals who made the sightings were everything from airline pilots, military pilots, police officers, some of the people that your lives depend upon on a daily basis. These are very reputable and credible people. I hope that the testimony here from very credible people will convince you of that and will further Steve Greer's disclosure project in that pressure needs to be brought to bring this to the attention not only of the Americans but of people all over the planet. These vehicles have been seen and confirmed all over the planet. I am willing to sign a sworn statement or testify to my judgment and to what I have observed. Such things do exist. Please believe me. Please believe the those to follow me. Thank you.